Located just south of Porto and right on the coast, but close to a golf course, Espinho is small but well connected by train. Is this a good alternative to a big city because you can get to Porto easily but not have to deal with the busyness? Could this be the hidden gem that'll give you everything you're looking for? Let's take a look. Weather is always a hot topic when figuring out where to live. Espinho is in the northern part of Portugal. Now the north generally gets a bad reputation for weather, so is it really that bad? Okay, the winter months will get cool and rainy, but we're talking about temperatures in the 40s and 50s. You might also get a bit of wind coming off the water, but winters aren't frigid here. The best thing is that it doesn't get too hot in the summers. It hovers in the 60s and 70s, so for those of you who don't want it hot and are okay with it being a little cool in the winter, Spinho is a place to consider for your ideal weather needs. Although Espinho is close to Porto, it's technically in the Aveiro district. It's further north of Aveiro and connected by train to both. More on public transportation in a minute. In 2021, a census showed that the population is just over 30,000. It's possible that it's gone up a little bit since then, but the town is more known for beach tourism, a casino, and a golf course nearby. So it might feel a bit quieter in the winter and busy in the summer. But if you live here, you can decide if it's okay for you to brave the crowds at the beach in the summers and then enjoy less people and it being a little quieter in the winters. Here are some of the beaches you'll want to check out. There has to be more than just beaches though, right? We mentioned the nearby golf course, which is Oporto Golf Club, and it's the oldest golf course in Portugal as well as one of the oldest courses in continental Europe. This park is a beautiful place to relax and is surrounded by the library, post office, town hall, banks, shopping, cafes, and more. So it's a great area to visit, but maybe it would be a good location to live. With the housing prices rising in Portugal, let's take a look at this smaller town and if it has been affected. Because you're in a smaller city, it's possible to find an apartment that isn't as expensive. However, you will of course not have as many options. Location and amenities are obviously something that you'll need to take into consideration along with if it's been renovated. You can find a T1 for under a thousand euros to rent. If you're looking for something bigger, then anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 euros per month, depending on the size. Inventory is a bit low though. You have a lot more options for buying here. There are new buildings along with apartments that need to be renovated. Expect to pay around 150 to 160,000 euros for a T1, and this is an apartment that's turnkey. Some are a little more expensive, but you can find those in that sales range. For something a little bigger, you'll pay closer to 200,000 euros. So as we can see, homes for sale here are good value. The town is small and quite walkable, and of course the train station is really well connected to other cities, especially Porto. There's also a casino here. The overall cost of living here is lower, but you'll have less options for certain cuisines compared to the bigger cities. So you can easily access Porto for more options. However, the town is not lacking in restaurants. If you're seeking that slower pace of life, whether retired or working remotely, this would be a good town to consider because of the cheaper cost of living, but then also it's good location to the water and to other cities in Portugal. There's a public hospital here that's open 24 seven, along with other clinics in town. But you might need to go a little further north into Gaia or Porto for better options. The good news is that those aren't too far. You're about a 30 minute drive to Porto's airport as it's north of Porto, so you have to go through the city to get there. It will take you closer to an hour and a half on public transportation. Now, there aren't many job opportunities here unless you're looking to help out in a restaurant or cafe. But like Kaylee mentioned earlier, that this is a good place for digital nomads or remote workers because the cost of living is a bit lower compared to the bigger cities in Portugal. So it's small but close to Porto. You can live on the beach at an affordable price and experience a slower pace of life, especially in the winter. You might get those from Porto coming down to the beaches in the summer, which will make it a little livelier. Location overall is great. So, would Josh and I live here? All right, what do you think of Spinho? I really like it. I like that it's close to Porto. It is small feeling, so a little quieter than a bigger city, but it's so close to Porto and well connected, easy by train or a car. And with ride shares, Uber, Bolt being so affordable here, it's easy to take a car into Porto. What do you think? I would agree with that. I mean, I think there's more that I would like to unpack, but definitely agree that its proximity to Porto is great. Its proximity to the airport is really good. So it would be very easy and not very expensive to get from Spino to the airport or back. So if you're wanting to travel internationally, that's a possibility. Or if you're wanting to fly down to Lisbon or fly to uh, further south in Algarve, Faro would probably be 
kind of the main point you'd fly to or the islands, you've got that as an option. One of the things that really stuck out to me uh, and, and sticks out to me is the fact that there's an area that is very walkable, mm -hmm. but then, it, you know, Spino is bigger than just that area. Yeah. So in that regard, you have maybe just a, a fourth of the, the town, the city, that you would walk on a regular basis. And, and it's flat. And if you don't have a car, then you're not really exploring the rest of the area. Right. Now, would that become boring? Yeah, being in that area. And just that area, if you don't have a car. Although that area does have good options for restaurants and shopping, but this is where I guess it would be nice to have a quieter, maybe a more affordable kind of place to live, but be close to Porto, close to a city. But you would be at the mercy of the train timetables if you don't have a car. It would You wouldn't necessarily need to drive around Spino, but it might not be nice to have a car to get out of there and explore other parts of Portugal. For sure. I 100% see the allure in people that want to live up north, want to live maybe a little more cost effectively. Uh, maybe people that are having a difficult time finding something in Porto and they're finding something in, in Spino to live in. Although it seems like finding rentals anywhere is getting a bit tricky right now. Um, I see that there, I see that draw. Yeah. I absolutely do, but. You think it's too small? I think that it's, it just lacks like overall variety, which would have you coming into Porto a lot if you do live in Spino. Maybe so not a lot, but like if you're someone who likes to be active and you kind of like that energy, that buzz of the city, it's not in Spino. Yeah, it's definitely quieter. I mean, it, it's livelier during the summer because it has the beach. So you have a lot of people from around going to the beach there, which is nice. But so it's definitely quieter, maybe not as much nightlife, things like that. But if you're looking for something that's calm, it is a nice alternative to a smaller town, but that's close to a bigger city and an airport for that type of stuff. So I think it's a good option if you're okay not being in a big city. Another thing that I really like is that it's gridded and the road names are, are numbers. numbers. How yes. easy is that? Yeah, so that I is like a that. massive perk for, for sure. Absolutely like that it's gridded and, and you've got the train as well right in the city center. So connectivity, awesome. But would you expat that? I would say yes, I would expat that. You surprised? What? <laughs> yeah, I would not, I would not. So, okay, if we're thinking about this as a neighborhood of Porto, yeah. it's not. But if we're thinking about it like a neighborhood of Porto, where would you rate it on a scale of one to five? I would rate it, if it was a neighborhood of Porto, I would rate it at a four. I think that it's really easy to walk around. It's very walkable. It had right. shops, it had restaurants. Um, if it's in Porto, then if you wanted to get into another neighborhood for something else easily, you could just walk there. But I, I liked it. I, it was really close to the water, which was really nice. So I think it's nice that it is connected with the train, so it's not too bad. As mm. opposed to if you're out in the water in like Matuzinhos, it's practically the same, the metro, the train. But if you're out in Faj, that's not well connected at all. So you have the ocean, but you don't have the connection to Porto. Whereas here you can just jump on the train and you're in downtown Porto. So I would give it, if it was a neighborhood, a four out of five, but I would say yes, I would live there. It's quiet, it's calm. We don't need nightlife or anything. Right. So I think we would find our places, and then when we were looking for that special cuisine that we don't have there, we would come into Porto for it. Okay. But you say no. Well, I mean, if, if the question is, would you expat that or not, I would say no. Could I? Absolutely could live there. I think it'd be very simple to pick up life and move there and, and figure life out. But I think because of the lack of, of like overall amenities, mm -hmm. I, I don't really rate it. Um, it would be very much like middle of the road for uh, the neighborhood series, let's say. And look, we know that Spino is not a neighborhood of Porto. Don't get that twisted. We didn't even really consider Matzinhos or Villanova de Gaia as neighborhoods of Porto, although some people do. They're not neighborhoods, they're their own thing. Um, certainly from a, a municipality standpoint, they're their own thing. If I'm comparing Spino to the other neighborhoods that we've talked about in Porto, um, and I'm saying that it's actually in the city, it would probably be like a three. It's a, it's a pretty chill, like 
uh, yeah, it's a pretty chill kind of low pace vibe, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice. It is nice. I do like that it is so grid, walkable, flat, and um, the restaurant cafe scene seems to be good. One thing I do want to say is that like the principal cafe, that main cafe in the park, was more expensive than, than the cafes that you just find walking around the city of Porto. That but kind of nice venue me. though. Great venue. Why? But honestly, flat, walkable, a little quieter, not too big, by the beach, close to a city, close to an airport, connected by train, so you don't necessarily need a car. Similar to Matzinhos, not as nice, overall cheaper. Yeah. All right, if you wanna see more on living in Porto or what it's like up here in the north, click on this playlist right here. And if not, see what YouTube thinks you should watch by clicking on this video right here. Maybe they're right. Now, let's get moving. Bye. Bye.